Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Moses Kotane Virtual Lecture on Fridays. Uh, my name is Bongiwe July. Today we are looking at the funding of research, development, and innovation in South Africa. This is probably brought to us by Dr. Kolelwa Zulu Makwenyane. Um, she holds a PhD in chemistry from the University of KwaZulu Natal. She is currently reading for the Masters of Science in Technology, Innovation, and Management. Uh, researching on the review of policy instruments in research management. Uh, she currently serves as an independent director uh, for St. Gen uh, Company. Uh, she is currently um, one of the Black Women in Science Fellow for 2019-2020, an alumni uh, of South Africa's Brightest Young Minds Initiative. Uh, Dr. Zulu Makwenyane uh, works for the CSIR as manager for strategic research, development, and innovation. She also an MD of her own company, uh, Humelo Research and Advisory. Moses Kotane is very excited uh, to bring to you Dr. Zulu Makwenyane. Over to you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. July, for that um, introduction. And thank you to the Moses Kotane Institute um, for this uh, platform to have robust uh, discussions around uh, areas of innovation and research in, in our country. I'm honored uh, to be sharing a little bit of my experience in the system today. And um, as a disclaimer, let me just say before I even start um, from that introduction, I hope you can pick up that um, I have been part of the system. I have been through the system uh, of the NSI. I work in the NSI and I research the NSI. So I have a vested personal and professional uh, interest in NSI in South Africa that works. So when I say we um, in my presentation, uh, it's in the absolute uh, meaning of we. It, it's really we. So let me just um, go through uh, what we'll be talking about today. Um, in, in terms of the, the discussion that I want us to, 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 to have. Um, I'll just begin by a, a brief introduction um, of what I mean when we say uh, the national system of innovation. Um, the challenges that uh, face us as a research community, and I'll delve into some numbers in terms of R&D expenditure that the government um, has, has put in and invested. Uh, looking at the period between 2008 and 2018, and I'll um, analyze some of the insights that uh, we extract from um, those trends and uh, propose a few probable solutions to the challenges that we find ourselves in. And I'm hoping that there's going to be some time for, for, for some robust discussions in terms of um, the people that, are, that have joined us today uh, to at least ideate and, um, and look at what it is that we as a research community can do to solve some of these challenges that we, we find in our in our NSI. So 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 as 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 a start, um, what what do we mean when we say the national system of innovation? Uh, basically, I it, it's a network of institutions, public and or private. Uh, we'll leave uh, private for today and focus on on the public uh, side of things whose activities um, initiate important modified technologies for, 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 for the betterment of um, 
citizens of, of the country. So if you look there, we'll, we'll just leave the private side of things for today. We have knowledge creators and, and knowledge users. So your knowledge creators are universities and basic research and uh, councils. Those are the guys on the ground uh, that produce uh, knowledge. And uh, the, that knowledge that they produce is, is a product. And on the other side of things, we have knowledge users that absorb um, this knowledge for and uh, user application, which can be universities and um, some uh, institutes that uh, do science and technology training and education. So in South Africa, we, we, we have a mixture of those. We have universities, we have research councils, we have higher education institutes, we have um, state-owned um, enterprises that absorb um, this knowledge that comes from, from our primary creators. So it's, it's that network um, of institutions that form uh, the, the national system of innovation. And today we will look at the health of the South African national system in terms of what has gone into it, what has come out of it, and probably uh, try to devise some uh, solutions around the challenges that uh, are faced, we face in, 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 in our NSI. So, 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 so the, the challenge that I want to, to, to propose or put on the table today is that how, how do we, as a system of innovation in South Africa, innovate for impact? Um, the, the elements that um, form our landscape are that the GRD, which is the government expenditure on R&D as a percentage of uh, GDP, has uh, been declining. What that means is that the South African government has set themselves a target of 1.5 um, of GDP to invest into R&D. But where we are currently, especially in the past uh, five years, we've been hovering around 0.5% of GDP, which is not where we uh, would like to see ourselves. And uh, if you look at international practice, it's way it's way below even our, our target. That's that's our number one um, challenge. The, the second one is that um, the research community feels this gap, feels this void in terms of uh, constraints of resources. And uh, we've been calling for an increase in, in GRD, which is the government expenditure on R&D. But how do we how do we then in our context, South African context, where we, we have competing needs such as service delivery, poverty alleviation and inequality, how do we compete with those and 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 and, and, uh, and submit our, our our proposals to the government to increase uh, our GRT? Um, I, I want us to look at uh, workable solutions. How 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 do we make do or maximize what it is that we have uh, currently, and um, how do we commercialize our technologies uh, for for impact? I'll touch into how do we become inclusive? How do we localize our our solutions so that we are in a position to 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 innovate for for impact? And then um, in, in terms of uh, the numbers, so, so NACI has commissioned a, a, a task team to look at um, the commercialization of technologies that have been funded from the public purse for the past uh, 10 years, uh, detailing from 2008 to 2018. 20, 20, These are the preliminary numbers and stats that have come uh, from that study. Uh, what is evident here is that uh, over the 10 year period from 2008, uh, the national departments um, have gotten a lion's share of the GRD, which is the government expenditure on R&D. And um, that has been increasing uh, over the years. And most of that has been increasing um, to offset inflation. Uh, more than uh, it has been increasing because uh, there have been um, results uh, of commercialization that um, aligned to that increase. 
And what I want to highlight there, because we, we are on a platform that is driven by a provincial government, is that provincial governments have seen an increase, we've seen an increase from um, the, 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 the provincial governments in terms of what they are putting uh, in terms of uh, R and D, which is a which is good news to me, it means provincial governments are are, are looking into into making R and D uh, crucial to, to 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 their activities, and they putting um, their their money where their mouths are, and over from 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 that. The highlights that we, we can extract is that over the 10 year period um, in total, government has invested over 125 billion rands on, on R&D. And that 125 billion represents 93.4% um, of that R&D budget. Or, and provincial governments have only invested around 8.9 billion of that budget. But it's encouraging to see that um, there is an increase of uh, that amount from from provincial governments. So in, in, in terms of that amount that the government has invested in R&D, who are, who are the guy, to, who are the departments or the players in the NSI that have received a, a lot of that funding? And from the left there, you can see with no surprises that um, the Department of Science and Innovation, formerly known as the Department of Science and Technology, has the lion's share of, um, of the expenditure, uh, followed by higher education um, with 21.4%, um, and uh, minerals and energy is completes the top three of the national departments. What, what is important um, to note is that over uh, Sixty percent of that is only going to ten um, national departments, out of a possible seventy-two um, government departments. Um, what this means is is that uh, more government departments um, are not really investing uh, part of their budgets towards R and D. It's only the usual suspects that you would expect that are that are doing that. And um, in, in terms of the provincial government, um, we, we, we see KwaZulu-Natal, which, which is um, a, a, an insight that excites me. KwaZulu-Natal, uh, agricultural, and, agricultural and Rural Development, um, invests most of its uh, budget towards R&D, uh, followed by the Eastern Cape and the Western Cape. Uh, but if you look uh, there, there's... Um, Four in, on four instances, the university, the the the, the province of KwaZulu Natal invests um, in 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 R and D. There's also economic development and um, agriculture and and rural development that um, invests um, um, into into the R and D. So 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 having having seen all of that, how how does the money then or the investment flow? from both uh, national and um, provincial governments. So what happens is that uh, the funding that is uh, allocated by national treasury to, 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 to both national and provincial is then transferred to what we call um, R&D performers. And from that graph, you can see that most of uh, the beneficiaries of those transfers from national and provincial um, a science councils, um, it's a higher education institutes, which are mostly universities that conduct research, and it's state-owned um, enterprises. What then becomes uh, important to note again is that uh, out of that, uh, those big budgets that national and provincial governments um, get, uh, only 9.8 billion and eight. Uh, a billion respectively sits within the departments. The rest of those budgets uh, are transferred um, to, 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 to these players as indicated there. And over the 10 year period, this transfer to, 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 to the science councils and uh, the SOEs has amounted to 133 billion rand. 
um, if if we, we we drill down into into the data and try to get a sense of uh, how much and who are these players in the NSI that receive all those transfers from national and provincial, we see um, the the National Research Foundation uh, having received about twenty billion rands um, of that. The CSIR and the ARC coming in at number two and number three, having received about 14.7 and 8.9 uh, billion over that 10-year that period. We have uh, the, the Medical Research Council, uh, NEXA, uh, the Square Kilometer Array, have also, have also benefited from the transfers from, from national and provincial uh, governments. And to finish off the top 10, we have the University of Pretoria and University of Cape Town as, as, as beneficiaries of, um, of transfers from um, national and provincial governments. So in, in, in a nutshell, this, this, this is how, um, this is how uh, the money flows of, of, of R&D and expenditure look like in our system. We have the big budgets from the departments um, national and uh, and local and, and provincial, which accounts for about 95% of all R&D expenditure, and all that goes uh, gets transferred to the science councils and NRF, and amounts to about 7, 57 uh, billion, and of that, um, most of it goes to 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 higher education institutes, and it has totaled about 27 billion rand, and the top three beneficiaries of that funding to, in, to, to HEIs at the University of Pretoria, uh, University of Cape Town, and University of KwaZulu Natal. So, so, so from, from, from this quick and uh, overview of the money trail, what is it um, that uh, we, we can see in terms of our public purse when it comes to R&D? Firstly, I, uh, I, I, I put it on the table that um, I, there's, there's what I call uh, circular funding, which means R&D funding flows from national and provincial towards single entities in, in, in the system, like your, your H, uh, HEIs, um, SOEs, and uh, research councils. And um, it's circular in that, um, one institute, for example, I'll take I'll take the CSIR, um, would receive funding from national government. The same institute would receive uh, funding from provincial governments, maybe from um, from KZN, from Northwest, from 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 Gauteng, and they'll also receive some money from the NRF. But all this money uh, comes from the same public purse. It's just uh, transferred differently by the different. Um, entities. That might not necessarily be a bad thing, but um, if you look then um, in, in great detail of what extent of commercialization has happened in, this, um, in these institutes that has as a result of what has been invested by the government, we see that the extent of commercialization is not well documented. The success stories that are there in our system are, are project-based and not necessarily form a narrative of um, the NSI and what the government has put in and what has come out of that investing. And um, the reporting of R&D funding is one way in that we, we can understand the numbers that come out of the public purse in terms of the national and uh, uh, provincial governments, but we are not able uh, to, 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 to drill down and, and, and get a sense of how much of that has it, it achieved in terms of innovation on the ground, where, where it ends up. That information is not um, easily available. It's, it's, it, 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 it's not packaged. It, 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 it needs some, some form of study or research into it to say the government has put this much into R&D and this is what has come out of it in terms of innovation and, um, and research in, in, in South Africa. How do we then um, improve uh, the systems and work more together? I think there's, there needs to be documenting success stories in a systematic way that speaks to the investment that the government has put in 
and what it is in terms of research on uh, returns on investment um, that we can we can we can we can document. I think I think I've, I've, with that I have I have laid some foundation in terms of what it is that is happening at government level and provincial uh, level, and we know what is happening at that level and what is not happening. But as a research community, how how do we then come together and and try to ideate some solutions? and think amongst ourselves wherever we are, wherever we're conducting research, wherever we're innovating, how do we as a collective uh, try uh, to innovate um, for impact? And I propose that uh, we might need to look at prioritizing the standardization of performance metrics. Uh, are, we, are we measuring the same thing? Are we, are, we, are, we, are we understanding what it is that we must um, we must measure so that we can talk to impact. When we say impact, what is it that we're talking about? Do we have the same understanding of what it is that we, 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 we are working uh, towards? And in terms of government, maybe the needs to, 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 to have a, a stronger hand in terms of being intentional about R&D against national objectives. Are we innovating towards that? Are we are we are we are we designing solutions that uh, speak back to 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 the ordinary South Africans, or we are doing research and innovation uh, for the sake of in, of report uh, for, for of um, um, research and innovation? Those those are, are, are the questions that I have at hand. And in terms of reporting back to to R and D funders, are, are we reporting that we've just used money for the sake of uh, being allocated funding, or our interest is in is in is in is in demonstrating um, impact? Also, uh, in terms of funding mechanisms, uh, uh, do we have funding mechanisms that speak uh, to the gap that exists between basic research and uh, commercialization? Um, which is which which brings me then to 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 another challenge to us as a, as a research community what is it that we can do what is it um that institutes like Moses Makodane can 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 implement so that um we 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 are we all uh, of the same view that our research activities our innovation activities uh, speak to national imperatives. I've proposed the integrating existing solutions. If 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 you can go back to to my slide, the the the, the province of KwaZulu Natal, uh, we've seen trends in them um, investing in agriculture and rural development, and um, that that is an action by a provincial government. So when we as the research uh, community speak about 4IR, we speak about uh, digitization, we speak about connectivity. Are we trying to, uh, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are we, are we integrating what we are proposing as a solution to what is already happening on, on the ground? Um, I, I think we should not try to reinvent the wheel. Um, the numbers have spoken. There's a lot of activity in terms of agriculture and um, rural development. When we bring in new solutions, those solutions are they integrated to what we know is working already. When we design our programs, when we design our interventions, are they designed um, to reinvent the wheel or to leverage uh, on what is happening on the ground um, already. So maybe that's 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 a challenge. Maybe I'll put um, on to um, uh, our, our colleagues as, as, at Moses uh, Kotani because I, I think a few weeks back another colleague of ours was presenting on digitization and connecting uh, and making rural communities uh, connect to, to to the grid. Uh, but how do we then integrate those to what we know that people are doing on the ground? Um, already. And I've also put there inclusivity. And uh, what I mean by that is that as we go um, on with our research uh, activities or funding our research activities and innovation, um, is are those programs that we are designing um, inclusive of uh, the majority of South Africans? 
I've said innovation there that is devoid of a uh, majority of South Africans is, 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 is really not innovation because um, if we want to make an impact and uh, commercialize technologies for impact, then we must um, develop uh, local solutions for local problems. And as we, if we continue our, 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 along the, the lines of class, race and gender divides, we, we will not be going anywhere. I've also um, uh, included increase. Uh, how do we increase then government returns on uh, investment in terms of R and D? Maybe we need to rethink our alignment to to, to national um, imperatives. What is it that we are innovating uh, towards? Are we are we are we in check in terms of what uh, our government is trying to do and aligning our activities towards that? And as a last approach is. Uh, are we targeting an approach uh, that is um, connected to industry and maybe as scientists, as researchers and uh, the research community, are we able to create a balance uh, between uh, what is traditionally our technology push, which, uh, which pushes us to innovate uh, because we think that the, 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 there is a market for the technology that we're developing or we're taking the cue from industry to say let's uh, put our hands in, in the part of industry what it is that they want what it is that they require so that in our activities we are able to to innovate for for, for a market that we already know uh, once what we, we 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 are working on so those those are the things that i wanted to to touch on today but i i, I welcome i think there's i hope there is enough time for us to engage on this and probably a, a, a little bit more on what it is that the R&D community can do so that we, we can increase our return on investment uh, to the government and help the government um, uh, so that if we are saying we're moving towards a knowledge uh, a, 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 a economy, what is, what is our role in that knowledge economy and uh, our activities, do they enhance what the government has already put in, in the past and be proactive in our activities and not wait for the government to say, this is what uh, I think needs to be done in the country. I think I will stop there for now and um, uh, welcome discussions, comments and questions. Um, thank you very much. I will hand over to, to Ms. Jula. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Zuluma Kunyane, um, for the lecture. Um, I think one of the questions that has come through is, do we know as to how much R&D funding goes to previously disadvantaged uh, universities? Uh, yes, 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 we do. But with my presentation, I just uh, showed um, the, the top uh, three beneficiaries. But um, if, if if I, I if I can go back to, 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 to the list that I have, we have about eight um, HDIs and collectively they have received about three billion rand um, over the past uh, 10 years. It hasn't been like that. It only picked up at around 2005 for government to, to, to fund R&D activities there. But if you, if you go back to that slide, it's still way less than the top five universities that received um, that receive government funding. That's um, that's a, that's an area that uh, maybe the government also needs uh, to look at in terms of pumping money in, 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 in that sector of, of, of research practitioners. Thank you very much. Um, has the R&D expenditure been declining or increasing in the private sector? Um, are, are we finding any commonalities in terms of collaboration between government and the private sector in, in research and development at commercialization level? I, I think, I think, I think um, 
it had in, in terms of GERD, it has been declining uh, in, in that study in that study period. And it's only picking up now in terms of collaboration between private and, uh, and, and public institutions. As public institutions uh, begin to pivot around uh, collaboration and leveraging funding that is diversified from their government purse, we, we've seen an increase in, 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 in those collaborations and, um, and, 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 and government funding. But it's only been the past uh, for from about 2016 to about 2019 that we've seen an increase, but of, since 2008 up until 2015, it has been it has been on the decline. Thank you. Um, what, what are the key challenges um, in commercializing research and, and, and innovation outputs um, from the, the amount of money that has been um, spent on, on R&D, but are, are we finding any uh, uh, companies and, and viable products that have actually come out of that research? Uh, let me let me just start with with the challenges. Most most of the challenges is that the nature of research and, uh, and innovation is, is a time game. Uh, it's it's it requires large uh, amounts of investment to, to for products to make it um, to to the final uh, stage of commercialization. And once we do commercialize, our markets in South Africa are really not ready for our products. Hence, I said maybe we need to align uh, our thinking in terms of uh, being market facing to have a sense of what the market wants before we innovate. Our approach is for now is that we develop products then when we get to the market, we find out the demands of the market are not met to the products that we have. Hence, I propose that maybe it's time to rethink how we, 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 we approach our relationship as a research community to, to, to the market so that we have a perfect balance between what it is that they want and what it is that we can work on. So as we develop and innovate, we know there is a market already that wants uh, the products that we are innovating. Um. Thank you very much. I, I think it's, it's, it's very clear that there, there has to be a lot of thinking, especially around how do we then um, conduct research in this knowledge economy, understanding that research for research sake um, is no longer um, viable mm -hmm. and is no longer uh, 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 giving the results um, that are linking to, to, mm. to the national picture of where South Africa is, is, is heading. And, and we thank you very much for the, the insight, um, especially because as Moses Patana Institute, we are a research institute and, and we, we are funding um, our research for, for postgraduate uh, students. Perhaps it's about time we also go back to the drawing board and relook really at the, the, the connecting the dots between what is expected of research output, what is the market demanding? Mm -hmm. um, and more so driving towards what industry is, is, is requiring so that all this um, output is driven towards uh, viable um, economical uh, products and services that will come out out of research. And with that, we thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen. That brings us to the end of today's lecture. Please join us next week as we will be talking governance and leadership. Thank you.